Hello guys, welcome to my session about kickstarting with Scrum and Agile way of working. So today we are going to have a high level overview of Scrum. Uh, my last session was about software project management and today's session is based merely an extension of what that really. Uh, at the end of this session today, you will have a good understanding of why so many people use Scrum and how really it works. So you can also start implementing Scrum within your team, your company, or if you haven't started using Scrum, or even improve a framework within your team if you're already using it. Moving on, I am Nirvan Bagro. I'm 25 years old, the head of the digital projects at LSL Digital, the digital department within the La Sentinel Group. Uh, I have around six years of experience in the IT industry. I am currently spearheading projects within the department and active in our end project management, technology consulting, scheduling, financial planning, and everything around software engineering. Uh, I did the jump into software project management, I mean, project management really a few years ago, and that was really challenging at the start. So I'm going to relate part of my stories, my experience with you guys during the course of this session. Okay, uh, just a disclaimer. So this is going to be a super boring session. I mean, project management is about knowing your theory really well and relating them with real life scenarios. So please note, this is a merely intermediate session. You might have, uh, you might hear a bit, um, some super technical words, which uh, you might not really understand, but keep pushing your questions through the uh, YouTube uh, question section. I will try to wrap up the session within 40 minutes. I mean, one of, I mean, a maximum of 40 minutes, which is one of the virtues of project management, uh, project managers. Okay, so for the agenda today, we are going to look into, we are going to go a bit into Agile, I mean, as prerequisite. Uh, what is Scrum and why is it so awesome? Uh, we are going to do a comparison and contrast between Scrum. Uh, we are going to look into the Scrum rules, the ceremonies involved, the sprint, what is sprint planning, a product backlog and Scrum artifacts, and we are going to end with a session of uh, Q&A and a recap. So let's start. Uh, what is Agile really? I mean, we need to grasp the, uh, the what, what really is Agile. So Agile is basically a set of ideas and principles that serve as our North Star in software engineering. By definition, uh, North Stars align our energy, emotion, and actions in the service of our vision. In the context of software engineering, our North Star is the manifesto of agile software development. So we abide to the manifesto of agile software development. So through this work, we have come to value a few things. So individuals and interactions of a process and talks, working software over comprehensive documentation, customer collaboration over contract negotiation, and lastly, responding to change over following a plan. Moving on, uh, Agile is really a structured and iterative approach to project management and product development. So it recognizes the volatility of products, uh, I mean, and provide a methodology for self-organizing teams to respond to change without going over race. Uh, what I mean about structured, so I mean, we are going to see that in the next slide and about volatility means, I mean, the requirement of product do change with time. Uh, I mean, today Agile is hardly a competitive advantage, so it's no, uh, no one has a luxury to develop a product for years or even months in a black box. I mean, it means it's more important than ever to get it right. So black box, there's no interaction from the outside, no from the inside. As you can see right now, so this is a bit about iteration, Agile is structured and iterative approach. So as you can see, Scrum consists of iteration and sprints, which we are going to talk in a bit and yeah. So at the start, you can see with the final product, um, uh, at the very start, how the final product will look like is barely understood. We just know how to do it and what to do to get there. Through several iterations, we tend to perfect the idea. So that's here, that's it really. Uh, now we are going to jump to the main topic of the day. So what is Scrum and why is it so awesome? Really, everyone talks about Scrum videos, but yeah. Uh, Scrum. Scrum is an agile project management framework that, I mean, that teams use to develop, develop and sustain complex products. You may hear people use Scrum and Agile interchangeably, but the truth is they are wrong. 
Scrum is about continuously shipping value to customers. It is a framework for getting work done, while Agile is a set of values, ideals, and principles. Uh, this is, I mean, this actually means it's come, it comes with significant cultural change. You cannot just go agile as such, it, it, as it takes a lot more to change the way you think than it takes to change the way you work. But you can use a framework like Scrum to help you think in a more agile way and practice building agile principles into your communication and your work. Teams of all, of all type around the world use Scrum. So, I mean, uh, even HR, marketing, and the most common type of team, I mean, the teams that use Scrum are software development and engineering teams. Uh, yeah, so uh, it's a favorite framework for many development teams for various reasons. If, if you're in the, I mean, in the software engineering world, software is a living and breathing thing. Requirements do change, goals do change, situations are subject to change. Scrum embraces change. With Scrum, a product is built, I mean, in a series of iteration that we call sprint, uh, that break down big complex projects into bite-sized pieces. I mean, this, this makes project more manageable. Uh, this allows teams to ship high quality work fast and frequently. And this gives the team flexibility to adapt and change. Scrum transparency and iterative framework, I mean, also help overcome many of the recurring problems that people often, uh, that people often uh, experience in, uh, in waterfall projects. I mean, you might, you, you might have heard about the all waterfall projects, I mean, this model. Scrum iteration makes it possible to reduce the risk and the cost. It helps, I mean, it also helps get the feedback uh, from the user and increases the speed to market. Uh, milestone at the end of sprint, which we are going to look into, uh, also come frequently and gives the team a sense of regular tangibility. So this helps the team to stay more focused and energized. So now you understand we've all these benefits why Scrum is so good. Uh, Moving on, so Scrum, I mean, as we just so critically, I mean, it's a process that have been used in the, in, the late, in the early 90s. So it's not a process, a technique, or a definitive, it is rather a framework which you can employ various processes and techniques. Now let's jump to about, uh, let's compare and contrast between Kanban and Scrum. Kanban and Scrum are both frameworks that help teams adhere to agile principles and get things done. So Kanban, Kanban really, uh, it's a Japanese word which is composed of Kan and Ban. So Kan means sign and Ban means board. Simply. <laughs> so Kanban is about visualizing your work and limiting your work in progress, which is the so-called WIP. So, and maximizing your efficiency. Kanban teams, I mean, they focus on reducing the time it takes for a project uh, or even use a story from the start to finish. So, so we do this by using a Kanban board and continuously improving the flow. Now, uh, moving on. So as you can see, this is a Kanban board. So you have the state to do progress and done. So you can see that, I mean, if you know, if you work with Jira, so you will know a bit about this. What is it really? So I'm going to uh, make, I'm going to just uh, explain what are the different parts quickly. I mean, because uh, as you can see here in red, we have a visual signal, which is the card reading. One of the first things you'll notice in the Kanban board are the visual cards. I mean, these are the things, these tiny sticky notes. I mean, you have, you know, all this. Uh, Kanban teams write all of their product ideas and work items and cards, usually one per card. So for agile team, each card could encapsulate one user story. So once on the board, the team, these visual signals help teammates and stakeholders quickly understand what the team is working on. So in yellow, a third, so which is the column, so it's another hallmark on a Kanban board. So each column represents a specific activity that together compose of a workflow. Uh, in uh, purple, uh, as you can see, it is the work in progress limit. So it's one important thing in Kanban. So work in progress limits are the maximum number of cards that can be put in one column. So a, co so a column with a work in progress limit so of three, let's say for example, cannot have more than three in it. So when the column is maxed out, 
the team needs to swarm those guards and move them forward to the new guards to move into that stage. And uh, yeah, so as I so, yes, so these work in progress limits are critical for exposing bottlenecks. Uh, so and maximizing flu. So work in progress limits so will give you uh, an early sign that you are committed to too much work. As, I'm, as I, um, I mean, my friends tell me about, I'm always overwhelmed with work. So, come, I mean, coming to the next point is about the commitment point, which is a blue point, I mean, the blue on the far left. So Kanban teams often have a backlog on their board. This is where customers and team may put their ideas and that teams can pick up from there. The last part in the Kanban board is the delivery point. So the delivery point, point is the end of the Kanban team workflow. For most teams, the, the delivery point is when the product is in the hands of a customer. So the team's goal is to take the card from the far left to the far right. So I mean, uh, take it from the commitment point to the delivery point as fast as possible. The time elapsed between two is called the lead time. Moving on. So now, as we have seen earlier, Scrum team commit to ship working software through regular intervals, what we call Sprint. We are going to deep dive in a moment. So their goal is to create learning loops to quickly gather and integrate customer feedback. So Scrum teams adopt specific roles uh, such as the, I mean, specific role, create special artifacts, what they're going to see also, and hold regular ceremonies to keep things moving forward. Now, uh, just quickly, uh, as you can see here, at the level of a cadence, we have regular fixed length sprints of two weeks. Uh, but however, in Kanban, there is a continuous flow. So for the release methodology, there's a release at the end of the sprint. We call it the really the release between the, I mean, between sprints. So however, in Kanban, we have continuous delivery. Uh, as per the rules, uh, we, in Scrum, we have a product owner, we Scrum master and the development team. And however, in Kanban, we don't have those. In regards to the key metrics, we have velocity in Scrum, which is an extremely and simple method for accurately measuring the rate at which the Scrum development team consistently deliver business value. So yeah, so in Kanban, we have a lead time, cycle time, and work in progress. As per the change philosophy, teams should not make changes in the sprint, but however in Kanban, change can happen at any point in time. Uh, most in, by most interpretation, I mean, now, you know, in Scrum, even in, even in Scrum, we have a Kanban board. I mean, by most interpretation, Scrum teams can use, use a Kanban mode, but with Scrum processors, artifacts, and roles along with it. So the difference between Kanban and Scrum is actually quite subtle. So however, there's a key difference. So as laid out, Scrum sprint have start and stop dates, whereas Kanban do not have those. So uh, team roles are clearly defined. We have a product owner, development team, I mean, yeah, Scrum master, and so on. Uh, can, I mean, however, both are self-organized. Kanban board is used throughout the life cycle of a project, whereas Scrum board is cleared and recycled after each sprint. The Scrum board has a set of number of tasks and strict deadlines to complete them. So there it is. I mean, some are the key differences between Scrum and Kanban. Now let's talk about a bit more about the people involved in the ceremonies of Scrum. So I hope you're not too bored about my session. I mean, it's quite bulky, I know, so bear with it. You're good. It's going to get more interesting right now. So the first, uh, I mean, there are three primary roles in Scrum, which is the product owner, the Scrum master, and the development team. So starting with first, the Scrum product, um, the Scrum product owner are champions for their product. So their main job is to bring vision to life, have a constant pulse on the market and the customer. So really, they are focused on understanding the business and the market requirements, then prioritizing the work that the development team will do. Now coming to responsibilities of the Scrum, I mean, the Scrum product owner. So they are three. So we have managing the Scrum backlog, release management, and the stakeholder management. So managing the Scrum backlog. So they are the one responsible for all of all the new backlog items being put in the backlog. This means the product owner will know about everything that is in the backlog and the other people that put 
new item in the product backlog and should ensure that the community, I mean, these people, before we put uh, new items in the product backlog, they should ensure, I mean, they should communicate with the product owner, really. Uh, as part of the release management, so the sprint, you have to understand, is not a release cycle. I mean, sprint is not release cycle, but it's a planning cycle. This means, this means that Scrum teams can deliver at any time. Ideally, they would deliver frequently throughout the sprint, allowing the sprint review to review real customer usage and feedback. However, continuous delivery is not always possible and over release model are sometimes required. So yeah, as for the stakeholder management, one of the key roles, so any product will have many stakeholders and in, I mean, involving the user, the customer, the governance and everyone at the leadership level. So product owners will, work on the, I mean, we work all these people and effectively ensure that the development team is delivering value. So as we say in Creole, they, they DPA dans des bateaux, so they have to represent the interests of the customer and the team. Yeah, so moving on to the second primary role, it is the Scrum Master. Scrum Masters are the uh, Scrum expert within their team. They usually coach developers, product owners, and businesses about Scrum processes and look for ways to find your the practices. Let's talk about the responsibility. So they ensure transparency in the first place. So to effectively adapt, inspect and adapt, it is important for the right people to see what is going on. But it is actually much more harder than it looks. So the Scrum Master is tasked to ensuring the Scrum team works in a trans transparent manner. Uh, there's a theory about uh, called empiricism. So it's a theory about that is knowledge is based on experience that is derived from sensors. So it's a fundamental for Scrum. Uh, Agile approaches this idea that the best way is to way of planning is to do work and learn from it. So empirical method is easy and uh, requires the Scrum Master to coach the Scrum team on breaking down, describing clear outcomes and reviewing these outcomes. Uh, Self-organization, so one of the key responsibilities is, uh, key, I mean, self-organization. Telling, I mean, they have, to, his role is to tell the, I mean, to help the team, the development team to self-organize. So they don't self-organize by themselves. It's, it requires effort, support. So the Scrum Master will encourage the team to step outside their composer and try different things. So the loss is, values, they promote values. So Scrum defined five values of courage, focus, commitment, and respect, and openness. Not because it is nice to have them, but it actually creates an environment of psychological safety and trust. Let's move to the third uh, role in this Scrum role, which is one of the important, most important, the one the people who do the day-to-day -day work, it is the Scrum development team. So, which is composed of developers and designers. And the people who do the day-to-day -day work to accomplish the spring goals and collaborate with the product owner and focus how much, they, I mean, they really focus how much work they can do. And I mean, they let the Scrum owner know, so just to not get out of pace. So yeah, so we have a different, I mean, we have a few roles. I mean, firstly, uh, delivering, um, I mean, delivering the work through the sprint. They ensure transparency during the sprint. So they meet, so they meet at the daily scrum, so which we call the stand-up meeting, the daily scrum, I mean, provide transparency to the work and provides a dedicated place for the team members to seek help, uh, talk about their success and highlight about their issues and blockers. So the scrum master will facilitate uh, the daily scrum, but ultimately it's the responsibility of the development team to run the meeting. So it is their meeting to help them as a group to inspect, adapt, and work, uh, adapt the work they are doing and work in, work in a more effective way. Okay, moving, moving on, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's talk about the ceremony. So let's talk about ceremonies. I mean, it's not the ceremonies you, re, you, you people you, you usually attend, the scrum ceremonies. So, yeah, meetings, I mean, the meeting or with ceremonies, as you call them, are important part of agile development. So, the other ones are the important meeting and should not be conducted in vacuum. So, it is, temp I mean, it is tempting to add 
some ceremonies to a waterfall project and call it agile. But uh, this won't you get this won't get you anywhere. The first uh, important uh, ceremony is the sprint planning. So the purpose of the sprint planning is to set up the entire team for success throughout the sprint. Uh, come into the meeting, the product owner will have a prioritized list, I mean, product backlog. So they discuss each item with the development team uh, and the group collectively to estimate the effort involved. Effort, I talked about this last year. Uh, the development team will then make a sprint forecast and learning how much work the team will complete from the product backlog and so on. So yeah, I mean, the attendee should be the development team, the scrum master and the product owner. This happened at the very beginning of a sprint. So usually an hour per week for, I mean, an hour per week of iteration or two weeks. I mean, as an example, a two week sprint, I mean, which sprints are usually two weeks, I mean, in length, uh, two weeks sprint kicks off for with a two hour planning meeting. Moving on, the second ceremony is the daily standup. Standing standup is designed to quickly inform everyone what is going on within the team. So it is not a detailed, I mean, detailed status meeting. Uh, the tone should be light and fun. I mean, you joke around, you get, but it should be informative. So. You have to get each team member to answer these three, I mean, three key questions. What did I complete yesterday? What will I work on today? And if I'm blocked on anything, these are the three key questions that you have to uh, ask. So there is an implicit accountability in reporting on what you have completed yesterday in front of your peers. Uh, no one wants to be the team member who is constantly lagging behind doing the same thing and not making progress. I mean. It's not a really a shame to be lagging behind because, I mean, the daily stand-up is there to... If, let's say uh, I have one of my colleagues who is cheated, so we usually talk... I mean, I do my scrum meeting in the car, really, so so I talk about things. So uh, uh, he usually gives me another perspective of things. So I'm, I tell him I'm stuck, but he let me know how things are... I mean, how to get... I mean, he usually tell me ways to, to, to go through. So yeah, if this usually happen, I mean, once per day and typically in the morning and not more than 15 minutes. Remember, you don't book a conference room for a daily stand-up. So conduct it, conduct the stand-up, sitting down is not the way to do it. Standing up will help you keep a meeting short, really. I know people who do uh, stand-up meetings sitting down. Yeah, everyone is having their breakfast. <laughs> so yeah, uh, Moving up, moving ahead. So the third ceremony is the iteration review. So it's one of the key things. So iteration review is the time to showcase the team's work. So uh, they can uh, be casual Fridays, demos, uh, or in a more formal meeting structure. Uh, it is time for the team to celebrate their accomplishment, demonstrate the team, I mean, what work has been done, and get immediate feedback from the product stakeholders. So project stakeholders, my bad. So remember, work should be fully demonstrable and keep the meet, uh, meet the team's quality ball. I mean, yeah. So it is required for the development team to be there, the Scrum Master and the product owner. And uh, it can be and can have, I mean, so if you want to get feedback, you have to put in the, you have to pull the products, uh, the project stakeholder, of course. So this usually, usually happen at the end of the sprint and usually between 30 and 60. This is the place you need to have food to get everyone attention. Yeah. Uh, last uh, ceremony is for retrospective. So the purpose here is, I mean, is it really about just to, uh, I mean, retrospectives help the team understand what worked and what didn't. So retrospectives aren't just a time for complaints, but without action. Use, you, you have to use the retrospective uh, to find out what went, I mean, what's the team, uh, what working so the team can continue to focus on those areas. So also uh, find out uh, what's not working and use the time to create, to find creative solutions and develop an action plan. So yeah, uh, the attendees are we usually the development team, the Scrum Master and the product owner. And usually happen at the end of an iteration and usually takes up to 60 minutes. 
Moving on to Sprint. So I'm just taking a break. Just to keep track on time, we are 28 minutes. Uh, sprint. So what is Sprint really? I mean, it's not, I mean, it's not really running around. So Sprint in the Scrum context is a short time box period when a Scrum team works to complete a set amount of work. So Sprint are really at the heart of Scrum and Agile methodologies. And getting Sprint will help your Agile team ship better software with fewer hiccups. So as I said earlier in my presentation, many, many associate Scrum Sprint with Agile software development. So, so much that, uh, so much that, that Scrum and Agile are often thought to be the same thing. They are not really. So Agile is a set of principle and Scrum is a, is a framework for getting S, H, I, T done. Ah, not polite to me. Yeah. Let's talk about the sprint planning quickly. So, you know, the Scrum poll really did think of everything. So, in order to plan, I mean, in order to plan your upcoming sprint. So, use this plan of uh, a sprint planning meeting. So, sprint planning is a collaborative in event in the first thing where a team gets uh, answers two basic questions. So the first one is about what uh, what work can be done in the sprint and how will the chosen work gets done. So choosing the right work item for the sprint will is a collaborative effort uh, between the scrum master, the product owner, and the development team. So the product owner discusses, uh, discusses, oh, I just move a bit too fast. Yeah, so yeah, the the product owner discusses the objective that the, uh, the objective that the sprint should achieve, and uh, product backlog items that upon completion will achieve a sprint goal. Every sprint has a goal, so the team creates a plan for how they will build uh, the backlog items and get them done before the end of a sprint. So to summarize, the work items chosen and the plan for how to get them done is called the sprint backlog. So by the end of uh, the sprint planning, the team is ready to work on the sprint backlog, taking item from the backlog into progress and done. Moving forward. So yeah, the sprint planning is a ceremony that helps focus execution, minimizes surprises. I mean, that helps focus on execution, minimize surprises, and guarantees overall high quality code. This this process usually takes up an hour per week, as we said earlier, or two hours for a, for a week uh, sprint, and uh, should be ideally done at the early stage of the week. So, yeah, uh, really, so this is about mini uh, sprint planning. Coming to the last part of the session, I think, yeah, it's about artifacts. Uh, what are artifacts, really? Scrum, agile scrum artifacts are information that the scrim of a scrum team and stakeholders use to detail the product being developed, I mean, the actions to produce it, the and actions performed during the project. Uh, the agile scrum team artifacts are namely the product backlog I have been speaking about, the sprint backlog, and the increment. We are going to look into that. So the term artifact is often associated with archaeological uh, ruins and ancient relics, yet in software development, the term artifact refers to key information needing, needed during the development of a product. So we have the three, so product backlog, the spring backlog, and the product backlog. So to explain, so the product backlog is a list of features, enhancements, bug fixes, tasks, or even work requirements needed to build uh, a product. The spring backlog, uh, the spring backlog in short, uh, is a set of product backlog tasks that have been promoted to, to be developed uh, to be developed during the next product increment. So sprint backlog are created by the development team to plan deliverables for future increment. So lastly, what is a product backlog? So a product backlog, uh, uh, no, a product increment. Sorry, a product increment is a customer deliverable that 
were produced by completing the product backlog task during a sprint. So uh, it, it, is, it also includes the increments from previous sprints. So you may have iteration to go to sprint. So yeah, so there are always one increment for each sprint and an increment is decided during the scrum planning phase. So an increment uh, happens whether the team decides to release to the customer. Uh, yeah, one more thing is uh, product increments are incredibly useful and complementary if you, I mean, to continuous integration and continuous uh, deployment in version tracking if needed or version rollback. So yeah, uh, I think we have covered the basics, I mean, for kickstarting with Scrum. Uh, we are a bit on time. Uh, I would like to request the host for, I mean, to shoot me so questions if you have them. This is these are my details. So if you want to reach out for me for email also, so uh, they just have LSL digital. I mean my thing if you want to have a chat if you want to uh, talking about tech. I mean yeah. So you can reach me out on this. So uh, if you want really to know, so look for the Scrum guide which is free. So everything that I talk today is a lighter version of a Scrum documentation. So yeah, uh, thank uh, you guys uh, for this session. Uh, I really thank, thank you Chitesh, my host. Thank so, you for, for that. So yeah, thank you and long leave the developers conference. <laughs>